Professor Martin Epler, welcome to Aalto University. Thank you for having me. Uh, I ask you to choose one of these cards you may have seen before. Of course I have, yeah. Of course, as a researcher, I'm very interested in the questions. And I know that the questions are sometimes more important than the answers or the quotes, so I start with a question. The main research question is, why is communication not clearer today than it could be, and what can managers do about it? How do you enable experts who know their domain very well to speak in a clear language to non-experts? You know, not use abbreviations, acronyms, technical terms, and being short and simple, but not too simple, right? Is a risk. Is a risk if you, uh, for example, uh, change things just to make them simple and they're no longer accurate or reliable. That's not an alternative. Right. So I hope that uh, the clarity research that we do is also helpful for teachers because they have complex insights as well that they need to convey to non-experts, their students. Um, but the questions of the students just now showed me that their interest on behalf of the students is also very great in this issue as future communicators realizing that clarity is a strategic issue and the clearer they communicate, the more successful they are going to be in their job applications, in their work as communicators, in the organizational context as well. All right, after the question mark, I think I go for the quotation mark. Yes, our main message. Huh? If I should reduce it uh, to a quote, uh, I would uh, use the quote of Tr um, Bernard Shaw, George Bernard Shaw, that the problem with communication is the illusion that it has been accomplished. Because something is clear to you, it will automatically be clear to others. Right? Always check whether your message has been clear or not by asking for feedback. So feedback cycles, I think, are key for clear communication. We're doing experimental studies where we can measure if something has been clearly understood. Uh, we also, for example, in strategy communication, and here we compare if the same message is equally clear in Finland as it is in Switzerland, in India, in Singapore, uh, in the UK, uh, because clarity may also depend on culture. So that's something we're uh, researching. I think what I've found in Finland is that the implementation of the feedback mechanisms is more difficult than in other cultures. Uh, you um, in other words, uh, it is um, more work to get explicit feedback in the Finnish culture than in other cultures that provide feedback as a default mode. I think to be sure that your message has been clearly understood. You have to make more effort in Finland to get feedback than in maybe uh, Anglo-Saxon culture, in American culture, or in a um, southern, more southern culture. And feedback is essential, but maybe here you have to really um, strive to get it. You have to make an extra effort to, to get that feedback. We focus only on business, on organizations. Yes. So we look on okay. communicating complex insights more clearly in the corporate world strategy communication, risk communication, crisis uh, communication, investor relations, media relations. How can managers be clearer in their communication? Okay. Well, first you have to get them clear in your head, yeah. and then you can co communicate them clearly. And then yes. you need to check whether it has been conveyed clearly. That's the feedback part. And that may be different in different cultures, but we haven't enough findings uh, to, to clarify that last point yet. <laughs> Should we tackle the last one, the, okay, yeah. the exclamation mark? Okay. Yeah, um, what makes waves? Uh, I think the measurement issue for sure. That's uh, part of the zeitgeist, that's uh, in topic. How can we quantify clarity? And we're examining that as well through surveys, um, through uh, experimental studies, through automated uh, scanning of documents where you can measure certain things like word length, sentence length, uh, whether the vocabulary is of every day or specialized uh, terminology. So measurement, quantifying clarity is one of the trends for sure. It's also one of the big uh, yeah, research um, areas uh, that, that is um, hot at the moment. R measuring, quantifying uh, different levels of clarity. Well, uh, being clear uh, goes back to Aristotle. Um, although he's not the clearest of authors himself, um, or the notes that he, he left us, but you can already find in, in, in the different writings of Aristotle uh, elements on how to make a clear argument, for example, in the Topica. Uh, but also all the great minds have uh, written about how to be clear in our thinking, 
just the communication part maybe has come later on. And the big boom in clarity research was in the 70s. Unfortunately, it has been very limited, mostly uh, regarding legal text and educational text. And in the management area, we still have a lot of catching up to do. And here, the research is only beginning uh, systematically now when it comes to clarity. First important step, make sure you know what your main message is. What is it really you want people to take away from your communication? What do you want them to do? So keep the end in mind. What purpose do you want to achieve with your communication? That's the first step. Second, what kind of audience are you communicating with? What do they already know? What are, for example, uh, what are their backgrounds? What are their preferences? Uh, without thinking of the audience, you cannot be clear. And then thirdly, make sure you keep it concise. Before you jump into details, give an overview. That's very important, a structure. Regardless of the audience you're talking to, a structure is always key. Hopefully it's one that they understand quickly. Regardless of the purpose, without structure, without overview first, and then details later, you're very likely to be unclear. So purpose, audience, structure. <laughs>